All right, what's poppin', everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Dan. I do hope you're not doing well. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video. Well, really, I'm actually just talking about two subjects rather than reporting on news, even though one's kind of news. But I'm going to be talking about two things. I'm going to be talking about Chelsea's loss at home to Manchester United. Yes, I think it is a news talking point because it was quite varsical. Now, it's not Manchester United's fault, but I'm going to go over a couple of things that happened in the game. Notable talking points that have, of course got all over the headlines this morning and I also want to talk about N'Golo Kante who got an injury in that game and I wonder has he ever been the same ever since Maurizio Sarri played him in that final through injury I'm not so sure so there's stuff to talk about regarding Kante and have we seen the best of him is that in the past now? Anyway, I'm going to go over that and speculate in just a minute. But before we get into the content today, guys, I want to remind you guys to please do subscribe to Football Therapy. If you are indeed new to the channel, please sub, hit that bell notifications icon because it is important. Why not like the video to help me out and follow your boy on Instagram to hang out with me on Instagram lives. All right, let's get into it. Before we talk about the story that is N'Golo Kante and where he's at in his career, let's talk about the game. Chelsea lost 2-0 at home to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's Manchester United. It's the first league double Manchester United have ever done on Chelsea in the Premier League. The last time they did a league double over the Blues was before I was born and I'm 30 years old. So wow, Chelsea have forever been a thorn at Manchester United's side, but for some reason Solskjaer, who's probably not the best manager, has the hex over Chelsea. Chelsea lately. Now let's just talk about it. There's some really poor refereeing slash VAR decisions in this game. Willian was booked for diving first off. Now he did dive I think. I think he went over the leg diving but the fact remains is the he goes around Bruno Fernandes' leg or he knocks the ball around rather and Bruno sticks his leg right out so of course Willian's gonna go over it. By the time he sticks his leg out there's no room for Willian to hurdle the leg. So he sort of just lets himself go over it rather than making an impact on the leg. So he dived his body, but really, there's nothing else he could have done. Like, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've looked at the footage and I've thought, well, so he should have just hurt his leg and made sure, whatever. Like, I'm not an advocate of diving ever, so maybe you have to hurt yourself for the referee to see. So I think personally, that should have been a penalty at the beginning of the match, you know, and then Jorginho's on the pitch, odds are that's 1-0 Chelsea. Now, of course, Maguire, common consensus by Manchester United pundits, by people all over Twitter, and of course, journalists, everyone is man, is a Harry Maguire should have been sent off for the stamp of his studs into Michy Batshuayi's groin area, very painful indeed. So, of course, he goes on to score the second goal. So at this point, you know, there's a shout for Chelsea getting a penalty. Maguire shouldn't be on, therefore he doesn't go and score his next goal. Chelsea scored a very good goal that should have stood and was ruled out for VAR because Azpilicueta was seen to push a player after being pushed himself. I mean, VAR's been implemented to see these instances. Again, the Maguire red card and the Chelsea goal are both common consensus. Maguire should be off and Chelsea should you know, have a goal. So it should at very least, if even if you don't want to give Chelsea the penalty, it should be one all against 10 men. Now, um, the offside was offside. It was a great goal by Giroud, but you know, even if it was just a couple of inches on his boot, that's offside. I get it. I didn't have to get the lines out for too long. That's what's what I've, there's been brought in for for that. No complaints. So Chelsea can feel hard done by. It's a genuine injustice in my opinion. And the headlines across all neutral news broadcasters would dictate that. But really as well, in terms of Chelsea had their B-Tech front three out, they had them um, instead of Tammy Abraham, they had Michy Batshuayi, who was dreadful, he wasted all, loads of big chances, Chelsea actually had a better XG than Manchester United in this game, Chelsea had been playing hudson Adore on the right hand side to link up with Rhys James, he's injured, and of course Pulisic is Chelsea's second top goal scorer, who'd play on the left wing, uh, he's injured as well, so the, the whole front three was injured, um, and they had the B-Tech front three, and obviously Olivier Giroud came on and scored a lovely goal, that's slightly offside, but he's been lacking match fitness since he thought he was going out in January, that everyone thought he was pretty much out the door, people close to the club were telling me. Didn't happen, but you'd imagine he'd be integrated more now with more minutes, especially after that on-pitch performance from Batshuayi. So we'll see what happens there. No criticism against Manchester United, they did what they had to do, they played a bank of five, they played a bank of four, and they can't play counter-attack football, and they, both the headers were very, very good, so regardless of Maguire should not have been on the pitch, it was a good header. Chelsea's problems remain the same, creating chances and playing most of the game in the opposition third, 
doesn't mean anything unless you have someone who can finish the chance, which Chelsea don't seem to have at the moment. Missing those clutch players like Diego Costa and Eden Hazard indeed. Right, another talking point of this game was of course N'Golo Kante coming off injured early doors which affected the game, which brings me on to my next part of the video. Kante came off of an injury and it looks like his abductor, Frank Lampard said, they're not too positive about it, they said it hasn't doesn't look good. He's been in and out of the team uh, all season with injuries. Now, okay, let's talk about it. So Kante was played through injury in the Europa League final, which by the way, he was magnificent in, uh, in Chelsea's 4-1 win over Arsenal, a notable result, performance, t title win. Um, so, you know, you can, you might sit on either side of the fence. Some people blame Sarri for playing him and then aggravating this injury and it's not been the same ever since. But then again, some people might be like, well, it's a 4-1 win over London rivals in a European final and he played really well. It was worth it, maybe. Do you see what I mean? So I kind of like don't have a opinion either way on this. But since he did play through that final, he's not been the same, in my opinion. He's been going in and out of injury. The um, the sideways got the injury today is the same leg. That's a problem. Even though Kante remains to show flashes of brilliance at times, he does look out of confidence by his standards when he's on the ball in terms of his touch. Um, he's not the same in terms of he can't quite get to the players how he used to when he used to inter when he used to intercept. If I can get my words out, and it is worrying, and it does pose the question again. Have we seen the best of N'Golo Kante in the Premier League already? Now, of course, I've explained my stance on him. I think he's Chelsea's only world-class player. But Kante is a player that his brilliance depends on his engine. I did a video on him recently. If you go check it out, it basically explains how he plays, how he has played for France, Leicester and Chelsea in his best performances. He is a box-to-box -box interceptive midfielder and he requires on his ability to move around the pitch making great tackles. But he's so much more than that as well. He can progress the ball into the offensive passage of play and he can score a goal as well. We saw it last season and the beginning of this season. So he's an amazing player, but these injuries are very, very concerning. Um, and before he's getting these injuries and going down, he's having these moments with a poor touch. He's not quite getting there. I know he's going to be like going on 30 relatively soon as well. And for a player that does rely on pure stamina, pace, and like I said, his engine, that's a bit worrying. He's not the kind of midfielder like Perlo who can get into his mid late 30s and just sit at the bottom of the pitch spraying balls like a quarterback. He's not that kind of player that will age well. So I am a little bit worried. And again, it's this sort of injury time reiterates <laughs> what's going to happen to Kante. People have speculated about Chelsea cashing in on him in the summer. Hope, well, they'd only be able to do that if they get him for an injury. Um, obviously, I think it cost a lot of money. Still, even though with his um, injuries of late, I think it'd still be north of like 120 million. But if Chelsea keep him for another year and he has another couple of injuries and is in and out of the team, that his price will go less than half of that, in my opinion, once he gets into his 30s and has little game time. Um, it might be like 50 million or 60, 70 million, which is still a lot of money, of course. But if you look at what he brings now and what he might brings in, it's worrying. Now, obviously, Chelsea really, really need Kante at the moment. They need, all they, they need all they can get to get them over the line in the fourth place spot. But it is worrying. Like, I love the player so much, and I think everyone does, but it, it just makes you concerned about, like, where does this leave him, you know? Chelsea do look really good in the double pivot. Early in the season when Mason Mount was playing in the number 10, pressing well, he did look quite good when he came on for Kante as well, Mason Mount. But when it was Jorginho and Kovacic in that double pivot, they do play so, so well together, Kovacic and Jorginho. You saw it yesterday, the way they were linking out uh, from deep, from midfield. They play out so comfortably together. They know where each other are. There's a genuine synergy and superb partnership between Kovacic and Jorginho. One that you just do not see with Kante and one of the others. Obviously, again, Kante is an, individ he's an individual player. You know when you get these like mercurial attackers, Kante's almost like a mercurial defender. He like moves around defending, intercepting, and he just generally doesn't sort of build these chemistry partnerships with defensive players so much. And again, it comes under threat when he's injured. His individual brilliance does come under threat in, in this instance. So again, this is just me expressing concern for the situation with Kante. I'm not saying Chelsea should sell him because I'm not even entirely sure they should. I'm just expressing a concern of a situation that is very, very real at the moment. But anyway, I want to get your guys' opinions on this situation. What do you think about N'Golo Kante? Do you think Maurizio Sarri should have played him in that Europa League final, or perhaps he shouldn't have? 
Do you think that the best days of Kante are over due to recurring injuries in his leg and not being able to find superb form again? And also, let me know about your opinion of the Chelsea United game. How do you feel it went? Do you think VAR ended the game? Do you think Chelsea are still their own worst enemies in terms of not finishing the chances that they're creating? Get down in the comment section below and express your thoughts and opinions on both the United game and the N'Golo Kante situation. If you have enjoyed the video today guys, please like the video, that means a lot, that does help a lot. And remember to subscribe to Football Therapy if you are indeed new to the channel and hit that bell notifications icon because it does mean a lot. It means you can keep updated. I upload on this channel every single day. Chelsea News, if you want to come here, I consolidate it all for you, tell you what's going on and I express my opinion. So make sure you do swing by every day. Also, feel free to follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it for me, ladies and gentlemen. You all enjoy the football. Swing by tomorrow, you get more Chelsea news. I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outlined it chuck. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I laugh me, baby.